Okay, so I'm Wolfgang Krüger, I'm a neuropathologist uh, from Göttingen in Germany and I want to report you on two sessions that I uh, participated at. Uh, the first one I was lucky to chair on um, the topic of multiple sclerosis, energy deficits and mitochondrial disturbances and what role they play in the pathogenesis of multiple sclerosis. So besides that we know that MS is a clear autoimmune disease, there are mechanisms beyond that that cause neurodegeneration and especially axonal degeneration. And in this session it was clearly highlighted that reduced blood flow and uh, reduced energy causes axonal depolarization and thereby leading to extensive axonal damage. In, and this mechanism is completely independent uh, of the inflammatory mechanism that we know to initiate the disease. Don Mahat clearly described the role of mitochondria uh, in this process and showing that they are pathologically uh, uh, altered in multiple sclerosis lesion, leading to an energy deficit in the axon. And the other uh, presentations in this session clearly highlighted in experimental models nicely out how this works and how axonal transport of mitochondria is affected by the inflammatory milieu and how this then finally leads to axonal but also as it was shown uh, by some experimental studies in synaptic loss uh, in the spinal cord of mice with uh, NMS-like uh, disease. There were also some more in vivo markers like sodium imaging which could uh, be a future marker for future uh, clinical trials as an outcome parameter that is clearly correlated uh, with brain atrophy and neurodegeneration and this can be then measured in vivo in patients. The second session that I was part of dealt with uh, new developments in progressive multiple sclerosis and initially there was a very nice overview on the different pathological mechanisms being relevant in progressive MS meaning diffuse inflammation in the white matter, in the meninges, uh, as well as cortical demyelination. And uh, Christine Stadelmann pointed out how this cortical demyelination develops going from animal models to humans and back. And she pointed out towards the role of uh, antibodies, in innate immune cells as important effector cells uh, in cortical demyelination. This challenges uh, clinical studies in progressive MS and Jeremy Chataway from the UK uh, outlined all the new trial designs that may be used for this uh, progressive disease phase going beyond that what we now use as double-blind uh, placebo-controlled uh, trials. In further presentations in this uh, session a new animal model was proposed from our side that may mimic different aspects of progressive multiple sclerosis with uh, continuous demyelination, ongoing neuroaxonal damage up to six months, and that also offered some new therapeutic options. And this was accompanied by a, a small uh, study with uh, uh, lipoic acid that clearly showed a dramatic effect on brain atrophy in secondary progressive uh, multiple sclerosis and further pathological studies in this session again pointed towards the important role of synaptic loss in the spinal cord for atrophy but also for the clinical uh, symptom of the patient and this presentation also ruled out that this neurodegenerative component occurred mainly independent of demyelination so demyelination uh, increased this damage a bit but it occurred in already or still normal looking uh, and normal myelinated gray and white matter. So this I would summarize as the main aspects being relevant for progressive neurodegeneration and axonal loss with new uh, ideas and new hypotheses generated from these two symposia.